Hi, thanks for watching this video. My name is Alex and in this video I want to talk about something that kind of concerns me or better that we have to talk about. So out of let's say 100 new composers, aspiring composers that want to get into the world of trailer music, out of these 100 maybe 80 or 90 of them do the same mistakes when writing music over and over and over and over again. And it's not just one or two of these mistakes, but mostly all of these seven that I want to talk about in this video today. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seat belts and let's get right into this. So number one on my list would be structure. Every trailer track needs a good structure. And uh, I see many composers doing this wrong. There are instruments and dynamics all over the place, but not really a storytelling excitement and tension creating structure. So a good starting point would be to start with an intro, then having a main part, then going back into like a bridge or a low intensity part, and then heading back into the main part with more intensity that is leading to that ultimate climax towards the end. Besides that, you cannot write great music without listening to great music. So head out there and listen to all these great trailer tracks out there that have been used and licensed very often and see how they have been built structure wise. So the most important thing is always to build something that tells a story and also creates excitement and tension. Besides that, if you want to learn more about structure in trailer music, you will also find a few videos here on my channel where I talk about this and show some examples of my released music. Okay, number two on my list, don't overthink the process. I see many new trailer composers doing this mistake and I know this from first-hand experience because this happened to me too and to be honest, it still happens once in a while. Your music should, as we said before, create tension and excitement and entertain all kinds of people, not just other composers. I mean, no one cares about your fancy chord structures, about the sophistication of your music or desperate attempts to reinvent the wheel. Of course, it's cool to experiment and to fool around, but don't overthink it. I also see many of you having difficulties with mixing or writing writing their tracks because of overthinking, so hours of consideration of what reverb to use, how to EQ every single instrument, uh, using complex DVZ string patches for a simple string uh, triad that is just somewhere bur buried in the background. So again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't pay attention to the details or do sloppy work. But if you have like 10 different percussion instruments, sometimes routing them to one percussion stem, to one percussion bus, I mean, and just seeing what's wrong with the frequencies. And if there's just like a little bump, try to get rid of this bump with one equalizer rather than setting up 10 equalizers for each individual instrument and just you know getting into all that detail. You can get into that detail later, but first of all, I would check if there's something wrong with the general outcome and then go from there. So these were just little examples, but I think you get the idea, too much thinking will always distract you from being creative. Okay, point number three, confusing arrangements. So please don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying that complex music doesn't work. It can definitely work, but there is a difference between creating a well-arranged complex track or a bunch of instruments playing wildly against each other. So I would suggest come up with a great main pattern or a basic idea and stick to this. So in case you already got a great melody, break it up into little rhythmic patterns. Use this melody maybe and, and turn it into like little ostinatos or an arpeggio for your staccato strings. Uh, make it half or double time or whatever you want to do. And for the intro maybe use your first half of the melody only and then use the entire melody in your main part later on. So most of the time you already got all the information that you will need from a single melody and your chord progression. Okay, so with the following I'm saying right now, I'm not even exaggerating and I just wrote it down because it's a little bit complex, at least for me, but out of 10 tracks, I could pick eight where every single one of these tracks contains that much information enough 
for two or three new tracks. Hope that makes sense. Okay, point number four on my list would be trailer music is more than just strings and percussions. And this is what I hear very often that you hear a trailer track and you just hear the main horn melody, you hear a string arpeggio, you hear one or two layers of drums and then maybe some synth in the background. And what happens here is that you're just paying attention to the most audible instruments. So what I suggest doing is listening to great trailer music and just focus on what is happening in the background of the music. Just leave all the main instruments aside and listen to all of these layers that are happening in the background. Okay, number five, not enough tracks slash channels. So this one is very important too, and I hear this about 70 to 80% of the time. People try to come up with a too complex structure, but with way too few tracks. And so just as a little example, if you want to build a wall of percussion, it most likely doesn't sound good when you just use one or two percussion patches and try to play lots of different notes. So instead, try to build an entire ensemble out of five to ten different percussion patches or even percussion libraries and go with the same pattern and the same accents. So in other words, don't use just a few sounds and let them play all kinds of notes. Use lots of instruments and let them play the same notes. Also, not kidding you, famous trailer composer once said to me, if you think you're done with your track, add five to 10 more layers. So number six is a point that I still hear not that much anymore, fortunately, but it still happens a lot. Don't over compress and over limit your music. So again, I can totally relate to that because I have so much firsthand experience with this because it happened so many times during my trailer music life. So what is basically happening here is that you finished writing your music and then you compare it to famous trailer tracks out there and you realize that your track doesn't sound as powerful as theirs. So what do you do? You use compressors and limiters to match the volume of these other tracks. But what happens is that you try to do it so much that your track starts pumping because of using too much compression and starts sounding distorted because of too much limiting. So please always remember if your arrangement isn't quite there yet, you can't fix that in the mix and you can't fix that with compressors and limiters. So if your arrangement and your mix sounds good and balanced, then you can take on the mastering. I would also suggest to do the following. So just as an example, instead of trying to build a full house, just focus on a 15 to 20 seconds main part and try to arrange it well. And if you think you did a good job on the arrangement, try to mix it and then try to master it and see if it worked out. Okay, number seven, and I call this the confusion of dynamics. And this is another big mistake that I'm seeing very often, that people start writing their track on the actual beginning of the track. So why is this a problem? When you start writing your track at the beginning and go from the beginning until the end, the chances are there that at the second half of the intro or on the main part, you already used that much instruments that are already so loud that you don't have anything left to build at the ending part. I mean, the entire spectrum can only hold up that much of information. And also you can't go past zero dB. So try to reserve all that power for the ending. Think about a marathon runner. If you just start, you know, try to run as fast and, 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 and give all your energy and spend all your energy within like the first five to 10 minutes, the chances are pretty high that you don't even finish the first three or four kilometers. So again, just my personal opinion, my personal experience, but what really helped me is to start working on the main part first. And then when you think it sounds cool, work your way backwards towards the intro and then see how much power you have left and then 
build the ending part from there. You could even start working on the ending part and then work your way backwards. So, I mean, just compare it to being a, a producer, a film producer. Would you start your movie script from the very beginning, from the first scene? Or would you first decide what the structure, the meaning, the, the, the message of your movie is and start working out this and then work your way around this idea? Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to use the comment section below. Also, please check out my other videos on my channel because I have lots of videos available based around trailer music. If you also need any help on writing trailer music, please check the video description below because there are many opportunities to help you out. And as always, thank you so much again for checking out this video and see you on my next one.